This is a brunch pre Oscars mini podcast that contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care if you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers. There's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Belfast. 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 This, Belfast. Is a, this is a speedy movie. This movie has some zip on it. It's Belfast. Got, it's, it's a got, fast movie. It's fast, yes. Belfast. Yeah, they don't call it Bell Slow. That's right. This one hums. You, you you get into this movie, it starts cooking real quick. The shortest of all the Best Picture nominees. Is that correct? I don't that know. Sounds I right. assume it's, so. It's, it's an a, hour and a half. If It's like 98 minutes, right? Yeah, so yeah. just like... There's no way that that's... I think every other one is like at least two hours. I Let's see. Drive My Car is like four hours. Yeah. Dune is 10 hours. Took me 10 weeks to watch. Uh Licorice Pizza is probably Licorice Pizza is probably like two plus two and a half I think yeah, yeah. so uh, anyway the uh, Belfast episode will just be us guessing the lengths <laughs> of every Best Picture nominee. This was one that I had to go back and watch for a second time because I had COVID the first time I watched it wasn't in the mood dropped that fresh twenty bucks on it didn't have that great of a time was like yo this movie's pretty good everybody can chill out went back watched it again this week. And I will say, it finally did it. It got its hooks in me. It took. I don't know if I'm quite what a picture, but I love this movie. Wow. Uh, I, I'm landing. I, I watched it today for the first time. I'm landing in the camp that you were previously in, which is like, everybody chill out. Like, yeah, it's, it's pretty a, good. It's a pretty good movie. Yeah. And uh, I will give it credit for being 98 minutes long and just. Making it count. That might be the shortest of the best picture noms. People have discussed that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think that it's it doesn't do much that it doesn't like outperform the other nominees in any category, I don't think. So I think it might. We let's get to the other categories. Uh this is up for a whopping six Academy Awards, and they're all big ones. Best picture. Best Supporting Actress, Judy Dench. Best Supporting Actor, Kieran Hines. Best Director, uh, Kenneth Branagh. Best Original Screenplay, Best Sound, and Best Original Song for the Van Man himself. Mm -hmm. Down to Joy. They're like, we're going to use all of his other songs. Van, you want to give us something original? And he's like, yeah, sure. This one's called Why You... And I, no, don't give us Why You on Facebook. <laughs> I, I did think about that. It's like the ending credits... We're just, why are you on Facebook? That would have been unbelievable. Or uh, this has got to stop with Eric Clapton. Uh, Down to Joy is a, gr is a really good song. Yeah, it's not. Uh, apparently, it's not going to win. It's not a betting favorite. It's not close to it. It's a good song. All the You know who's going to win, supposedly, all of the music awards? Who? Dune. Well, uh, um, yeah, I mean, like the I'm soundtrack like for Dune, which uh, Dune's review is coming up. Mm. Uh, very good. Very good score. Very good soundtrack. It was good. I'll, I didn't really like anything about Dune. Okay. But uh, <laughs> just like overall, not not for me. And the, the score of Don't Look Up is so much better than the score for mm. Dune. But um, I'll get out of the way real quick. Fuck off with the Best Supporting Actress and Best Supporting Actor nominations here for I don't, the grandparents. I don't get it. No. I don't get that at all. No. And... I saw that it was up for these awards, and I was like, yo, got Best Director. I agree with that. Wait, Best Supporting Actor? Hell yeah, because I think that we need to give Jamie Dornan his flowers. That's that right. That guy rocks. That's and right. Look. That's my favorite part of this movie, honestly. Fifty Shades is, thing happened. It's a, it's, a, it's a reclamation project for Jamie Dornan. My God. I mean, 2017 Elizabeth Moss could never with the bounce back <laughs> Dornan that we got. It's a it's been a it's been a very very strong um strong post 50 shades campaign for both Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan. I'm very happy about that. He's also in a show that people like, a new show, Jamie Dornan. And it's like not 50 shades, Dakota Johnson, nowhere near it. I really like both of those actors independent of each other. Same. Look, it didn't work out. I think I think I saw or read an interview with Jamie Dornan where he was like I don't regret the Fifty Shades thing. Like I regret maybe how how people went. feel about me as a result. But like he got to do the like it took care of my family thing. I'm yes. like, oh right, you are yes. probably rich as balls, and you can just do whatever film you want. And so, everybody knows who he is. Like, yeah. So he does the yeah. He's the guy. He's that terrible actor from Fifty Shades of Grey. I think yeah, that's, that's just right. his point. Like yeah. he's like I 
I'd like to have a better reputation as an actor. But but I like to think that we're growing as uh, as movie watchers and as fans to as to not say like okay they sucked in Fifty Shades. Yeah, they suck because we're learning that happened with Twilight mm. as well, where uh, Robert Patton Pattinson and uh, Kristen Stewart both have gone on to do. Pretty amazing things. I'm still not quite sure Kristen Stewart's gone on to do pretty amazing things. She's nominated for Best I Actress. Know. Did you see that movie? No. No? Okay. Um, I, I wouldn't be tossing around nominations okay. on that one. Um, but uh, but she was in What's It Called? She was good in Still Alice. She was really it, good. It was, it was in... then that I was like, okay, she's this is a good actor. I don't know shit about Twilight. My favorite Kristen Stewart movie is still Adventureland. Yeah, I never saw that one. But I'll take people's word that she's good. I mean, just based off my Still Alice experience and... I think she did the best she could with uh, Spencer, but man, yeah, Spencer was not a good movie. Not a good movie at all. This yields, this movie and these nominations actually yield probably my favorite fun fact I've uncovered in this Oscars experience. So you don't know it then, because you would have been like, I know what this is going to be if you knew it. So check this out. Kenneth Branagh made history with this film because... With the three nominations he received, Kenneth Branagh has now been nominated for more categories than anybody in Academy Awards history. And they're all like the huge ones. He's now been nominated for Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, Best uh, Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Live Action Short Film. That's not a huge one, but uh, Best Picture, Best Original Screenplay. So like all of like the what are the fuck me up daddy nominations he's got all of them he doesn't want any but he's got all of them so yeah. i think i might stand kenneth Branagh, who i'm not sure i'd heard of before i saw this movie really yeah i um or i didn't know by name i'll say i knew him by i knew the name i didn't i didn't really like know much about him but i knew that he was i knew that he was the guy from dunkirk and, uh, and oh yeah he's the guy who uh famously kicks off one of our best tweets ever uh, with the uh, scene from Dunkirk is like, what do you see? Oh, of course. Home. Of course. Yes. You're right. It's that he's the um, what's uh, what's my my girl's name from Ted Lasso who does the shame shame. You know the the famous shame shame yeah clip. That's not from Ted Lasso. That's what's her face though. Is it? Yeah. From Ted Lasso? That's Rebecca. From, Re- what? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, you can just see a thing a million times, and then once it's placed in your head, like, you know who that is, right? You're like, wait, don't you fucking tell me. Is that so-and-so? I did not know that. Holy yeah. smokes. I've, uh, Hannah Waddingham. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So she wasn't nominated for anything in this, which, honestly, I think she's probably just as deserving as Judy Dench. Like, love you, Judy, but... Don't really see why she needed to be nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Wait, who? Judy Dench in this no, movie. No, but who are you talking about? I was saying like uh, Hannah Waddingham is as deserving of a Best Supporting Actress. Is she in this movie? No. Oh, I was going to so say, I'd okay, say okay. Judy Dench not okay, deserving. Okay. No offense to Judy Dench, <laughs> um, but I'm not given either. Th- I, I I I could see Kieran Hines because the grandfather is a huge huge part of the, the relationship with the kid. Although spoilers. It really does end up being a uh, kind of grandmother movie because if it's not a, if she if she doesn't have the movie, she really doesn't have anything by the end of this thing. I know it's a uh... because they it's a fast movie. They and they, <laughs> they they move. They they get zipping away. It it's it's very funny that the they movie, launch that rocket they, right out of Belfast. Yeah, it's uh it's a ninety eight minute movie and they spend about like ninety five minutes. Like basically like, uh, talking about the Planning importance of leave. no the importance of family and like the the family sticking together and and um you know that's like a big central theme and then in the last three minutes they're like okay grandfather's dead let's abandon grandma yeah first ticket out of town I do so that that's though what I do really like about this movie especially on second watch is the grandfather has a conversations with the young boy played by uh jude hill who is i know that like every year it seems there's got to be like a cool kid actor who does a great job you need your tromblays you need your um your roman griffin davises Mm -hmm. you need what was my man's name who played yorkie i always forget his name archie archie something archie yeah. yeah you need your archie and i think of this kid jude hill 
was better than he crushed. Uh, yeah, he was so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's the scenes where he's talking to his grandfather, and his grandfather asks him it, in the course of conversation, like, "What do you want?" And they're talking about like big, heavy things. And early in the movie, his answers are like, essentially, "I want an ice cream cone," or like, "I want whatever." Like, I, I want to, uh, I want to marry this cute girl in my class. And he's like, "All right, yeah, well, like, it's not gonna happen." Mm-hmm. But like, <laughs> do you want to like? stay here where people are going to kill people or what do you want and then over the like as the movie progresses it's like what do you want and he's like i just want you guys to be around me Mm -hmm. and you're like fuck like even for this movie does such a good job of showing how something traumatic serious affects people who really are there's there's like a, a a shame in people who just like want peace and don't necessarily know how to find it or get it like the this is a protestant family in belfast who's like yo like we get along with our catholic neighbors like we're cool we just want this to work it's all good with us and on both sides there's like no you must hate them we must hate you you and they're just like yo like really not signing up for any of this like just want to get along so it's cool how it's not cool but like it does a good job of like sh- of reflecting that on to a child who's like, I don't know what the fuck any of this is, but like, I'm learning that. Uh, I think at the end of the day, I, it's probably best that we fuckers are around each other, huh? Because yeah. like people seem to be breaking shit and in uh, killing each other. There are some funny moments. The kid's funny, but uh, I've really buried the lead here, which is that Katrina Balfe is a fucking vision in this she movie, is. and that's not just to be like, hey, great job, pretty person, you are pretty, but. You cannot take your eyes off of her performance and her, which is why when I saw that this got a Best Supporting Actress nominee, I was nomination. I was so happy, and I saw it was Judy Dench, and I was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Judy Dench is barely in this movie. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. I texted you about, I would say, like thirty minutes into the movie, being like, "Oh yeah, the the mom in this could absolutely hit me with a car." Oh yeah, yeah. anytime. Yes, and then you had, and I asked, I was like, "Are you done with the movie?" No, you said I wasn't. no. Do you know what I was talking about when I said like just you wait? I assume that it was like the uh, the the party scene towards the end. Everlasting love. Yeah. Yeah. When it cuts to her, yeah. when he's singing, and it yeah. cuts to her, and she gives like this like look to her husband. That's just like oh, like where like you you oh, like, you're you're gonna sing. Okay, <laughs> just one song, and it's like this romantic moment between these two people who throughout the entire movie are just like. Basically negotiating on the rocks, essentially the entire movie. Yeah, that's a little dramatic when Jamie Dornan says uh, at Christmas when she's like, "Let's uh, let's wait till Easter because the kid doesn't want to move." The, Jamie Dornan works in London and he's like, "Hey, we can go to London. They can hook us up with a house. There's a garden where the kid can play football." I'll tell you what, the kid's like, "Yo, stop talking about this fucking garden, dog. I want to stay here. I want to be my friends. I want to marry that girl in my class." And she's like, uh, "Maybe let's give it till Easter." And it's very chilling that Doran says, I don't know if the boys will last till Easter because, like, people are killing each other. And he's like, I also don't know if we'll last till Easter. And I was like, why? It's like, you got something else lined up? Yeah. You fucking I, jabroni. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> he's like, got a fucking London piece? You're married, dickhead. <laughs> she can, if she suggested right, let's I give was, it till Easter, I was, I she's was saying waiting. she's okay with it, waiting till Easter. You, Mister Tough Guy, Mister, I'm never around my family. Is that that little? Tr- that's actually I'm, I shouldn't shame a guy who's like <laughs> breaking his back to do what he can to, to keep get his family, family out of the Civil War country. Yeah. I I was waiting like the but I didn't enti- like his tone. It's same. I was waiting the <laughs> entire rules. movie. Or sustained. I was waiting the entire movie for Jamie Dornan um, because he keeps like I don't want to say like running away, but he's not. He's never around, and he like acknowledges that he's like you raised the kids. I didn't raise that's the a great kids. scene. Yeah, and. Um, it's it's that came right after the point that you were just talking about. He's like, He's so like I don't know if we're going to make it to course. Easter, and if yeah, <laughs> if it happens, by the way, I want you to know you did a great job with them. Yeah. Um, but I kept waiting for her to like fall into somebody else's arms because he's never around, and she's too hot to be. Oh my! Just God. on the market. How could how could those people be fighting a religious war? That's with right. Such 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 wonderful people just strutting about. 
the love you could fall into. The fact that there, there was like a scene where there's a, there's a riot and she walks through the riot holding the son by his ear, essentially. Fuck yeah. The fact that everybody just didn't stop fighting and just like made a path and looked and enjoyed the, the scenery. Pretty unrealistic. I don't like the enjoy the scenery phrasing, but I hear what you're saying. It, but, and what a good mom. Yeah. What a good mom. I mean, back. dangerous. Like kind of a, I hate this term. I hate this term because at least when I hear it, it seems like it's just kind of sexist used by white people. But how badass. <laughs> yes. When there was International Women's Day last week, I was like the day after I was going to tweet this, but I was like, people will take it the wrong way and think that I'm like against International Women's Day. But uh, I wanted to be like uh, the word badass today looking for white dudes in Instagram captions. <laughs> and it would be uh, Will Smith. <laughs> In the empty house. Oh, yeah. Like, where is everybody? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, uh, one's, but, but that one's just for the Patreon people. That, that, that's just for the Patreon people. Um, yeah. Uh, if anybody wants to continue the badass conversation, we, we can uh, have it. But um, how badass that that's she's right. like walks through a fucking riot with two kids and is like, put it back. Wait, wait, is that where you found it? Or is it just you just walk in here right now? One put of the kids not even it. her own either. But to her credit. She threatens to kill that kid. That's right. She threatens to fucking kill that kid. God. Yeah. I, I'm i glad that I went back and rewatched it. Also, uh, something for which it's not nominated and I am offended is cinematography because I think it, it's in black and white, but it's also... Some of it. Yes. Oh, I was very confused the first time I Same. saw it. <laughs> I was like, is COVID fucking with me right now? Um, but it's in black and white, but it is in... 7k it, yeah. it is like the most crystal clear sharpest image i've ever seen in any movie i rented it in 4k and i'm very glad that i did because it looked you amazing. must have felt like you were in outer space it looked amazing yeah it looks so good it was actually distracting at one point because like they're they were um they're watching a tv set uh in the movie and obviously this takes place a long time ago and like the TV set was crystal clear. Yes, yes. And so I was like this is distracting. It should look way shittier based on the time. Yeah, um I mean, when I first saw it I was like, wow, what a couple of hot parents this kid has. And then like over the course of the movie I was like this image with these images you crazy for this one, Brana? No <laughs> wonder you're getting nominations left and, and right. Um, let's talk about the everlasting love scene. It didn't really do it for me the first time around because I didn't get it. So I'm, I'm really just like uh, striking my first viewing from the record. Okay. And now I do have the kind of uh, post-movie glow or whatever that you, you have after seeing a movie that piques your interest. Like where over the course of the next 24 hours or whatever, you're like, Damn, thinking about this part, thinking about that part. Very cool. The everlasting love scene is everything that it's hyped up to be, which is late in this movie, um, Dornan gets on stage and sings the first verse of everlasting love to his wife as everybody dances around. And it's so fucking weird. It's it, it does not belong in this movie. It is such a fucking artistic choice. It's basically like it feels more like Bollywood than anything else certainly more than anything this movie's doing it totally comes out of left field absolutely does not fit the tone and vibe of this movie and i fucking love that and if that video were on youtube it kind of is but not really if that video were on youtube i'd probably watch it a thousand times yeah i didn't really get it like it it was out of nowhere like you said and and uh it kind of just felt g like a little jarring yeah, it's it's very it's like a Kendrick Lamar song where like verse chorus verse chorus like starts another verse and then boom new song and you're like what the fuck happened what did you just do it is completely completely fucking jarring but it worked for me I I just love how weird and out of place that is especially not only does it not fit the movie from a tone standpoint. 99% or like maybe 80% of the music in this movie is just uh, Van Morrison songs. Yes. So, and then there's also the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang theme song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that that's just all the movie is. So like all the music, it's just like, it's not like a jukebox musical, but 
It's kind of close to one. Uh, Van Morrison tried. Yeah. He yeah. tried to make it a jukebox Van musical. Morrison just all over this. So if he were to get up and sing a song, maybe it'd be like Brown Eyed Girl or yeah. something that would be Van Morrison. And the fact that it's... He did the... There's a million versions of Everlasting Love. I went on a deep dive after this. Uh, he did the version by Love Affair, which is the version where like... The white boys try to sound like the the four tops, which the more I listen to that version, I could do like a 20 minute thing on some of the sloppiness of it. But it's so charming. Dorn up there. It's by far the best singing performance in a Dorn movie I've ever seen. Yes. Much better Famously. than maybe I'm amazed when yeah. he just like grunted it out. Would, would be a great uh, mashup clip to make, though. I thought about dropping everlasting love into dune and being like fixed dune <laughs> and just adding an everlasting love scene well we'll be talking about dune here very shortly so okay do we have any other uh thoughts because we got the kenneth Branagh thing the parents both incredible we got yeah man no, just, it just hits a big uh big old fine for me i don't want to say fine it's a big old pretty good but this is I went back and I was like, what were the movies last year again? What did I think of them? And I thought that Promising Young Woman was a top three movie last year. Promising Young Woman's Probably a pretty was. good movie. Mm -hmm. That means that group sucked. It did. That group really sucked. It did. Like, loved Sound of Metal, loved... Uh, I already forget what uh, else I would have liked more than it. But um, I really liked Minari. But like Mank, the father, Nomadland fucking won. Like this to me, th this would be the best, probably the best picture for me if it were last year. Yeah, but you can't say that because like uh, half the movies that came out this year would have been like best picture last year. Last year sucked. Not this doing... year sucks too, just not as much. This makes me think that it sucks less though. Like I think that it does maybe suck I'm coming less. Or, yeah, but I mean like it makes me think that maybe it doesn't even suck. I think it does suck. I mean, Dune for sure sucks, and we'll talk about that. But this right now, I still have to rewatch The Power of the Dog before I'm comfortable getting to any sort of rankings. But as currently constituted, I've still got Code on Licorice Pizza in kind of the elite tier. But knocking on the door, I've got this and Drive My Car, which initially I had this in the second tier, but I just didn't know where. I think that this is kind of in the upper echelon of the second tier for okay. me. I'm excited to see where our final lists land because I think they're going to be quite different. I, I I got no problem with that. All right. Same. All right. All right. All right. All right. That, this was a fast one. 